Hello, everybody. Well, I'm going to make a uh, vlog now, uh, responding to a question I received from uh, my friend Black Hat. And uh, although I can't quite remember where the question came in, I saw the question while I was at work today. I think it came through on my on my, my little iPhone here. And I was reading, and I thought, oh, that would make an interesting thing. So I go ahead. I, I made a, a note to go ahead and respond right now. Um, oh, by the way, this uh, this vlog is brought to you by the uh, J Vlog. Uh, forum. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, include that uh, link. It's uh, jvlogs.tk forward slash forum slash forum. Uh, for, <laughs> forward slash forum forward slash. That's right. jvlogs.tk should do it. I'll include the links below. Great place to uh, meet uh, uh, people who like to vlog about Japan and just talk about things. So anyway, um, Black Hat wrote and asked me about uh, my hiking and photography gear. What do I use for all of that? Hold on, let me take a drink. It's summer after all. It's a little bit hot. Thank you. So what do I use? As, you know, as as Softy Papa, YouTube will train all these things, whoever the heck I am out. When I when I endeavor to head out the door and go to explore. So you guys might be a little disappointed at uh, Black Hat. I mean, I'm, I'm not very fancy, but here, here I'll go ahead and show you what I've got. Well, let me start off with clothing, first of all. Um, I always wear uh, shorts. I never wear pants. I refuse to wear pants. We're well, not just in hiking. In in general, unless I absolutely have to. And this is my favorite pair of uh, hiking shorts right here. Um, they're made by uh, what is the name of the company? I picked these up last year when I was visiting the states. Um, what is his name? It doesn't say. All it says is made in Bangladesh. It's, an, it's, it's a semi-name brand in the States. The reason I like these, they're really heavy duty. Um, they can really take a look in and keep on ticking, so to speak. But they're cargo shorts. And I really like cargo. And then not only just cargo, they have these pockets here um, that open up. They also have these zippered pouches. And there's oh, a pair on each side. Here they're just right here. See this uh, zipper, how it opens up? And I really make use of these things. I keep uh, lots of stuff in there, uh, photography gear. And like um, they're really really useful. So these are very comfortable pants. Even in the summer, they're comfortable. They kind of they kind of they kind of low and uh, offer a lot of protection. I've, I've jumped in rivers with them, and they stay wet for a long time, being cotton. I think they're cotton, um, but that's okay. I don't mind. So start off with a good pair of pants, and I this is my hiking belt. Had this thing forever. You can see how how worn and frayed it is. It's you know. It's, it's literally coming apart at the seams, but I, I love this belt nonetheless. It's a perfect fit for me. The, the one notch there works just great. I really need another belt, but until this one breaks, that's what I'll use. For shirts, it depends on the season. It's summer season now, and uh, I have these uh, um, wicking um, shirts. This is what I'll be typically wearing most of the summer. Uh, it's this uh, dark... It's this, uh, you know, the, basically the sweat goes right through. They evaporate real quick. If I hop in the river and get wet or waterfall or something like that, uh, it's no big deal. It just dries off really quickly. Um, one problem with this, though, is that it doesn't, since it doesn't have a collar, I'm going to show you my camera bag. It comes over the strap. It comes over. I prefer to have a collar, something to prevent the uh, chafing on my, on my neck. I, sorry, I keep looking up here. I need to look down here where the camera is. Let me move this down. There we go. Now I'll be looking right at you guys. I prefer to have the, uh, the strap go around where there's a collar. That way it doesn't... Uh, chafe my neck, but this is good. Um, if it's a little bit cooler or um, cooler in the spring or, spring or fall, um, I will have a collared shirt similar to this that I wear. In the winter, I, I often wear a jacket. Um, I, mean, I, usually, I usually don't carry a hat, but I've started to do it recently because out of concern for uh, um, you know solar radiation, because uh, I'm starting to go bald, see? And i got to be careful about this this kind of stuff. I had to get a, you know something happening up there and I couldn't even see it. So even in the past, I preferred not to wear hats. I used to wear kind of a bandana type of thing, um, but you see that in some of the old softy puppet videos. But I stopped doing that. That was really handy. Actually, that bandana thing was really handy. I loved it because uh, it would absorb. I wore it to absorb sweat in the summertime, and uh, but it was useful for lots of things. You could take it off and wipe things with it. Use like a towel and the like. I like this hat though. It's um, reversible. Uh, I got this for uh, you know. 20 so odd bucks, it's a uh, Montbell. I like I got it because it's orange. That's why, because I like orange. I like to wear orange. Um, but uh, one thing I don't like about it, it doesn't have any straps, so if a breeze comes, whoo, it's gone. <laughs> Something else I carry. Um, I have these, uh, uh, these are called smart wool socks. I have uh, three or four pairs of these that I'll go through. Um, and uh, you can see this right there, smart wool. I bought these in the United States. Most of this stuff comes from the United States, I think. Um, even though it may be made in Bangladesh, it's uh, I bought it there. 
smart wool. Uh, these are really great. They uh, they can get wet, but they don't feel like they're really wet. They're very comfortable. And the best thing of all, these seem to be leech proof. The leech is this thicker than my average socks. The leeches here in Japan, the uh, Yamabiru, uh, will get inside and they can't burrow through the uh, sock. And so it protects my feet from leeches. A little bit warm in the summer, but hey, I really haven't had too much trouble yet. And then a habit that I picked up in Japan was to carry a hand towel. I am typically, uh, in the States, I never carried a hand towel anywhere, but I always have a hand towel now. Partially because in Japan, you don't have, uh, there's no paper towels in the washrooms to dry your hands. Typically, more so, uh, more often, now I'm starting to see it, but typically it hasn't been. That's really handy to have in general, one of those pockets will do the job. Um, so there, there's my clothing. Um, I carry all of this clothing uh, and all the stuff in a bag. And I'm not very particular. This is just a bag that my brother gave me when I was visiting in the States last year. I really don't care. I'm not, I'm not, like I say, I'm not particular. I don't spend a lot of money. I don't look at catalogs for hiking gear. And I almost never go to camping stores. And basically, whatever I have, I use until it breaks. And it's and then I buy the cheapest replacement that I can find for the most part, with the exception of camera gear. Camera gear, I do, I do care something about. I like this bag. It's got a lot of, it's tough. And it's got a lot of pouches and it serves me well. I tend to go through things quickly. Um, so I don't imagine it'll last too long, but hey, it's, it's been good. It's even got this little thing that I used to carry the Wi-Fi right there. But so there you go. My brother said this was a, like a you know $150 bag or something. I don't know why he gave it to me, but there he goes. So now we come to uh, cameras and gear like that. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Before I get to that, what else do I carry in this bag that's not related to cameras? What do I carry? Um, I always carry a, a, a bag of uh, toilet paper. You know, you gotta have toilet paper. You know, use a pit toilet, and you're all set. So I always keep uh, some some toilet paper handy. That's just a necessity. You gotta have. I keep a uh, in a bag. I keep this. Uh, this is a big trash bag inside. You can unfold that big, huge, giant trash bag, and I use that. I don't typically hike with an umbrella. So if it really starts raining bad, I throw everything, all my camera gear, into the bag, and then I can wrap the bag up with this and just carry the whole thing. I don't care if I get soaking wet. At least my gear will stay dry. So I keep that. Um, can I always carry a bear bell in Japan? I've got this one. I from the past, I simply had like a like a souvenir bell that I found somewhere. I got it for free somewhere. And like I said, I'm a cheapo when it comes to it. It's not that I don't like spending money. I just I'm not interested in shopping, <laughs> so if I have something, I use it. I like this though. I got this in the states this last summer when we were there, and see, it doesn't make much of a sound with the cover on. But you take the cover off, and you got a nice uh, sound. I can attach that right to the uh, uh, right, right to my uh, pack, and I'm all set to go. And when I am in a safe location and I want to film, because people complain about the bear bell, I can mute it, and it still makes a small sound, but not bad. Um, oh yeah, I carry uh, water. Uh, sometimes if I'm just going to be out for a while, for it's uh, winter time and I don't go through a lot of water quick, I'll just carry some uh, pet bottles, petroleum bottles, uh, plastic bottles, maybe one or two. My bag has pouches with most do on the side to carry two pet petroleum bottles. I'll just throw them inside. I'll just carry that. But in the summertime when I'm hiking, when it's really hot and, and humid and I'm really I'm going through a lot of fluids, I carry this big platypus thing, and it fits in the bag. You put it in, fill it up to two liters. Left a little mark there. I don't know. I've, I've filled it up almost to the top before. It works fine. Flip it upside down. My bag has a special pouch in the back. I, don't, I think it's for laptops, but it works well with water bottles. Slide it down inside. This comes up, goes out the top, and sometimes you'll see in my videos, um, I'll be walking along, and I'll have you'll see this dangling off to the side, and it's just mm, take a drink. That's all it is. And uh, typically this will last uh, two thirds of a day, and uh, on, a, on a summer day, this will keep me going. I really like it. It's a little heavy at first, but uh, you're really glad to have it when you're not too hydrated. And as last, as for equipment, I tend to not camp very much anymore. I, I stopped doing that um, pretty much since I got married and had a family. I like to come home and be home at nights. When I was single, I camped, and I had a really cheap, um, I mean, bottom of the line Sears tent. And a bottom of the line Sears Coleman. Coleman's a big name now, but uh, back then it was like, you know, value type. And a sleeping bag. I'd never used a pillow and just put my uh, clothes in the bag that my sleeping bag came and used that as a pillow, particularly when I was hiking, uh, hitchhiking, and I would um, just get by with that stuff. And uh, that's about all I added to it. I, I never have very much gear. But one, gear, one piece of gear that uh, I've always kept in all of my endeavors. Um, more for practical purposes than for safety, but it's also good for safety as well, is a big old knife. 
I've always had a big old knife. Now this, I really love this item. This is not very expensive, it's typical for me. I got this at a hardware store, and it's not actually a knife. It It is a, you can, well, it's a, it's a multi-purpose utility. I'm, trying, I'm pushing on this to get it to focus, silly me. As you can see, you can use it for camping or for gardening or whatever the want. But when you open it up, this thing is formidable. I mean, I mean, you, if I was going to go in a knife fight or something, I would want this thing. This thing is, it's razor sharp on both sides. It's uh, got a, uh, you know, kind of a, what is that, a scalloped? No, scallop is over here. It's got, you know, kind of a curved edge right there, a concave. And it's got this, uh, this, this serrated edge over here. And it's got a handy measure, measuring device. You can measure how far you're penetrating into something. <laughs> now, of course, I, like I said, I typically use it for practical purposes. I love this thing because it's actually a garden tool. Um, but in it's, it's uh, it even says it's green top. Can you see that green top? As a garden tool, I mean, I actually use it to dig pit toilets for aforementioned uh, toilet paper uh, and uh, bodily waste disposal. I'll use it for um, um, you know preparing a campsite if I'm going to be not a campsite for a picnic site. I have camped a couple of times in Japan. It's been handy for that. And uh, if, if necessary, I'll use this. I will fight a bear or a boar or another human being with it. Um, I've told stories before about how in hitchhiking I've been uh, I've been pretty close to being accosted or you know or I have been accosted, I've been kidnapped. Uh, lots of bad things have happened in hitchhiking. Hitchhiking is dangerous. I used to carry on my backpack when I was hitchhiking. I always kept my backpack sitting in the car right here and I had the knife kind of like hidden away, hidden on the side of the pack right there. That way when I was hiking, it was always right here. And you really couldn't see it. I had it, had it kind of surreptitiously hidden away. But I was always ready. I could pull it out in a moment's notice. And I'm a non-violent guy, but I knew it to be prepared. And so that way also when I turned my pack around, it would be right here, literally holding the knife in my hand. I remember one time, I won't go into details, uh, a man pulled a knife uh, on me as a driver and held it to my throat and talked about how he was going to cut my throat and bury my body and in the various ways. How he, and he had the knife right there. I mean, he was. I thought he was going to do it. And I'm standing there. I had the knife in my this knife in my hand, and it was. It had a clasp just like this one. And while he was talking, my finger, you know, popped that sucker open. And it was this, the knife was secured to the pack, and I brought my hand here, and I was ready. He had the knife there, and if, if I thought he made a move, it was going to be like that. He was going to whip it out, and we were going to have a knife fight right there in the cab of that car. Fortunately, that was in the middle of Idaho, absolutely out in the middle of nowhere, in a black, scary van. One of those vans you've seen of scary movies, and no, don't get near it, but I did. I still don't know what he had in the back back there. It was pretty scary. But anyway, it worked out okay. Uh, he was nuts. He ended up letting me go, um, and I wandered off into the night, and the thunder lightning storm uh, came in the night out there in Idaho and drenched me, and I was up all night for fear that he was going to come and uh, search for me out there and kill me, but he never did. So anyway, a knife is a good thing to have <laughs> for other reasons as well. Let's get on cameras now. Um, I carry my cameras a year. I got this in the States last year. Last year, or last year, our visit last year was very productive in that capacity. I don't know who makes this, but they've got a cool logo. Isn't that great? This is my camera bag. I love this thing. This thing, the uh, only thing I don't like about it is that it's this type of deal. So like I said before, it kind of chafes, chafes on the neck like that. I wish it didn't do that. But otherwise, I just love it. It fits everything perfectly. It's got all kinds of great pouches in there, um, accessory things. I've got it all. It's great. Let's get to the cameras. What do I use for, for my gear? I have um, one, two, I have, as a vlogger, I have three cameras, and I intend to get a fourth probably this summer. Um, let me go ahead and explain how I use the cameras and uh, their purpose. I'll begin with uh, my iPhone 4S with the uh, Mophie. Uh, Mophie, this is so. Here's the iPhone 4S itself, very slim and and uh, and trim. This is the uh, Mophie pack that my uh, brother-in-law gave me. It's got a battery in it. You can see if I click click on this button here. Lights up. That means I've got a full charge. And it's about equivalent to the life of, of the battery on the phone. Slips right in. Very, very easy. The cap goes on the top. Snap. And you are set. There's my family. <laughs> and you are set. Got a little button over here. You can see it's, uh, can you see it's, it's red right now, which means it's disengaged. If I turn it to green, it's engaged. And there now it's charging. You can see uh, that up here. 
up here. It's charging now. Great, great device. Um, this is my main cam. This is my main phone. This is my main camera. This is everything that I have. And my main you gear. If you're familiar with iPhones, you know, just flash that sucker on. Um, whoops, and there we go. Whoops. There's my camera, and I'm ready to vlog. You know, I typically vlog in the reverse format. You know, boink. I typically vlog uh, talking. There we go. <laughs> I'm all confused. Talking to myself like this. Hey, hey, hey. I'm talking to myself. That's it. And this is my main thing. It uploads um, uh, directly to the, uh, by default, to the YouTube bullet train. This is my YouTube bullet train camera. Hey, that's kind of cool, isn't it? You can see, you can see my, uh, you can see my uh, setup here. You know, I've got the uh, main computer here, my laptop computer up there, my cameras, my, uh, my, my adult beverage, and there's BLKUNK. Yeah, I'm watching the, I'm watching a great tonight. I'm watching BLK, BLKUNK. Can you see that? Is it two? There, there. It's called BLK UNK Steps Up. I love this guy. Here he is. Are they more common in Japan? And it's the woman who are. Who are he was. Um, he's uh, being featured. He was on last night with uh, uh, Victor and um, Hiko Simon on their Two and a Half Oyaji show. And um, actually, the um, he, he, although you might be surprised to know that how much I like him, but because uh, he's he and I seem very different in many ways. But um, I admire his uh, uniqueness and his gen genuineness, uh, and kind of like Victor, and in that capacity. And I made a the second, I think it was the second or third video I ever made on the Lyles Brother channel. It was called uh, B L K U K, a man of uh, a man of action. I admire him. Not uh, not, not everything. I mean, he's, he's he does some things that I think were may well, you know, you know we're, we're, nobody's 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 what perfectly esteemed in anybody else's eyes right of course you know we all have our things that are, are seen as faults in other people's eyes but I do admire them greatly so there we go um, there's my there's that's the camera I use for the YouTube bullet train I will upload other videos as well because it's a higher quality camera here than the, four, the iPhone 4 I always use the camera to capture a lot of stills but I'm not a big picture guy I'm more of a video guy this camera is my backup camera this is my old iPhone 4 and I use it for uh, uploads to the um, um, to the uh, my response video channel, so I can read walking along, you know, and I can read email here, and uh, click on here and and respond. And oops, why is that doing that? Let me move that over. There we go. So I can read and then respond over here, and uh, you see how that works. And then I can upload this one uploads directly to the U, my response videos channel. There we go. I come to my final camera. This is my Panasonic uh, um, HDC TM85. Um, the not model number may differ if it's overseas. That's what it is here. It's a mid-range. Um, HD quality camera. I really love this. It's probably my third camera that I've had since I came since I've come to Japan. I'm very happy with it. Um, good camera and uh, no data in it right now. There you go, armed and ready, ready to begin vlogging. Um, uh, what I love about this camera, in particular, here we go, is the 40 times optical zoom which is losing its focus at such close range but this optical zoom uh, means, means it's not digital zoom, it's actually the actual lens itself that's doing the, the zoom. It allows me to really get in close and tight when I'm out hiking uh, on animals and uh, beautiful sights that I see and also allows me to uh, do document stuff without trespassing on people's property. I love it. And I, I prefer the digital, like I said, I prefer the optical zoom over the digital zoom. The one drawback is the uh, the microphone here is very sensitive to wind noise and it picks up a lot of wind noise. Very good camera. I highly recommend it. I think it costs around uh, uh, gold mine in. You know, so like 500, 400, 450, 500 dollars, something like that. I can't, or I can't do the conversion. Very good camera. That, and then what else do I have? I want to have this. Um, oh wait, I have. Where's my, where's my Wi-Fi? I have a Wi-Fi unit too. Oh, I shouldn't forget the Wi-Fi. I don't know where it is. I have a Wi-Fi unit that I use that everything connects to. These two, I can run both of my iPhones off at the same time. Plus my laptop over here will work off of a single Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is great. It also allows me to upload higher quality videos to YouTube. Really great investment. It's about, it's about $3,500. $3,500 a month, yeah. About 3500 yen a month. But easily um, pays for itself in, in in terms of the quality of videos that I can upload, the number of videos. I can have dual videos uploading off of these two cameras at the same time off that Wi-Fi and then be on the laptop. I don't bring the laptop with me in the mountains, but I use it elsewhere. I sometimes take it with me when I'm just wandering the city. This is great. This is I got this. This was 7,500 yen. I picked up this up at the um, iPhone store. 
uh, the SoftBank store. After uh, th two attempts at finding a charging system that failed, they simply weren't quality. This thing uh, is basically er for every one of those lights is one half of a charge on an iPhone. So I've got two full charges for an iPhone in here. And if this thing starts to go down, I just plug it right in. But it's got the Mophie, so I don't have to worry about it. I use this almost exclusively with the with the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi battery is the weak link in my setup now until I have this. So when I go on an adventure, uh, if you see me you know, sending out a YouTube bullet train you know, video like, ah, I'm heading out, you know, I'm going to be in Fuji all day or climbing or, you know, somewhere here all day. This thing will be in my bag, plugged into my Wi-Fi, engaged, and it will last the whole day. The Wi-Fi, between the Wi-Fi's battery and this thing, I'm set. I don't have to worry about it at all. So, um, oh, one last thing. You guys might think that I hike in the mountains and that I like to do the silence and stuff. Hiking for me is not, not, I'm not a nature boy. I am a nature boy, but I'm not really as much a nature boy as I am a solitude boy, a solitude guy. I like to be alone. I like to be, um, when I'm in the mountains, it brings out the, uh, it brings out the, uh, the, the thinking man. Uh, and a lot of my thoughts are more, more, really, more akin to feelings that sometimes trickle to the surface in words and most often uh, bubble around in, inside my head without ever coming out. And one of the catalysts that I use to make that happen is music. I'm a big fan of music. You can see this is uh, up to Boston right now. I love big Boston fan. I love uh, lots and lots of different music. My playlist includes a lot of stuff from the 70s and the 80s. Lots of it's a wall of sound type of stuff that just envelops your brain and sends you off you know, into the edge, and then that's when the thoughts come, that's when the news speaks when I do that. So this device right here um, is a Bluetooth um, uh, enabled um, uh, speaker, you know, basically audio system. It's connected to this, but it's not connected. This goes over my, if you see this, if I'm in my videos and you still see this over there, I stick, simply stick this in here, and then I've got my, um, here's my headphone here, my wireless headphone unit, plug that in, there, this goes around here, this goes around the back, and I am tuning. Let's see what the music is. Oh, it's Boston. You can hear. Can you hear? I don't know if that's the mic. There's that great guitar solo coming. Yeah, oh, there we go. I shouldn't. Oh, beautiful. So there you go. I love this thing. So I listen to, uh, um, you can, I listen to uh, other music. On my, I have my one playlist. It's called the uh, my top rated playlist. I didn't create it. It's one that came from you uh, from uh, what is it? iTunes. And then I also have, if you're curious, my under podcast. I'm a big podcast fan, but I only have like a few podcasts that I like. Here's the po podcast that I, I typically listen to: the Drabblecast. That's my favorite podcast of all time. Um, with strange stories by strange people, strange authors for strange people. Um, Escape Pod, Science Fiction, and Pseudopod, uh, Horror Fiction. I just love those three. Between those three podcasts, I'm set all day. I listen to a lot of horror when I'm, when I'm hiking. Uh, I like the, uh, the sense of uh, dread, the, uh, the, the ominous sense. I listen to a lot of uh, Drabblecast, too. I like the weird as well. So uh, a lot of times when I, when I have a, a video that comes out, it's been inspired through music, the uh, sights, the feeling, the, uh, the endorphins flooding through my body and all that kind of stuff. I recommend it all. That's it. That's what I hike with. I have nothing fancy, nothing special. I, I, don't, I rarely buy anything, anything anymore. I just use what I've got until it wears out and then I find the quickest, fastest replacement I can find. I never do any research. Um, the only difference is cameras. I do care, but I do care about those, and I will put a little bit of thought and effort into those. So, uh, Black Hat and anyone else who's hung on this long, um, uh, thank you very much. I, I'm uh, glad that uh, I had a chance to. Uh, oh, what happened? To uh, to to share with you a little bit about uh, my uh, my my blogging style, and I will um, put an arrow through my head to sign this video off. You know, thanks for dropping by to see. Um, remember. Stop by the uh, JVlog forum. I've got to figure out a way to put a, the JVlog logo in there or something like that. JVlog.tk forward slash forum slash forward slash. I'm over there as Lyle's brother. You'll meet a lot of other nice people over there. I hope to see you. Take care of it. Bye-bye.